Hello, everybody. You are in role play. And this is a Zoom room. And there's a few other people in this room with me. So if I talk to anybody, that's who I'm talking to. Actually, I'm talking to my secret weird audience out there in the ether who I, I don't even know who you are. Today, we're going to play in role play with play. And play, I feel like, is such an important part of my life. And it's such a great way to not have the stakes be too high. So the whole idea and all of this you take at your own level, at your own range. The first idea of role play was just to roll around on the floor, hydrate tissue, open up our bodies. And then many more ideas have sort of layered into what it is. So before we start, I'm just gonna talk for one second about Dr. Andrew Huberman, who is an ophthalmologist, neuroscientist, and lots of people have been following him. He does a podcast. He just did a podcast on, pla on play. And in part of it, he says, the function of play, and I think, oh God, do we have to have a function for play? Like, he's like, I'm not a very playful person. I'm like, I can tell. But like, the, so the idea in the invitation is to play to play, to play to enjoy, to play to try on different possibilities, to roll around, to try different capacities. So not to take yourself too seriously is the biggest invitation here. And uh, yeah, not to take me very seriously either. Exactly, eh, you can stick out your tongue, you can be a weirdo, feel free. Like I've got all sorts of toys here because I used to lead this playful connection circle. So if you feel like you need some social centering, feel free to get in with the group. But if not, I'm gonna invite you to, I'm gonna take things off, there we go. Come in for a landing in your body. Maybe, in, maybe you're laying down, maybe you're standing up, maybe you are seated however it feels good to you to be in your body right now. And I wanna just start with playing with breath. So I'm gonna offer a few different things. Um, to make sound, we can add vibration. And like, my idea is also to make this somewhat fun because ideally for me, play should be fun and silly. Like we can't, play shouldn't be work, play should be fun. So no pressure. No pressure, Laura, to be funny or interesting or entertain people. How do I play in my own body? So here are the sounds I'm gonna offer. I'm gonna offer ha, ha, where you can open your mouth wide and just let out some sound, ha, and he, and who. So like the who is gonna be sort of like a more forward backward, the he is gonna be side side, and the ha is gonna be sort of up and down. It may not be that way for you, but if you move your mouth a lot, it will be that way. So playing with these ideas of ha, he, who, and feeling how those sounds land in your body, in your face. I'm gonna invite movement into my own body. So my ha can be whatever it wants, my he can be whatever it wants, and my who can be whatever it wants. And I'm already gonna get down onto the floor wriggling into myself as a playful being. How does it feel if I give my body total permission to play, to move around in ways that are interesting and in ways that are novel? So if I play the same exact game over and over again, I'm not really gonna learn something if it's always predictable. We want this play to be unpredictable and novel. And you could think like even novel environment, like if you can change your perspective slightly, the environment will become a more novel environment. Yeah. So, yeah, when we play, and this is low stakes playing. This is play where it doesn't matter. You're just playing. There's, you're not gonna win, you're not gonna lose. You're just playing to play. There's no winning, there's no losing. This isn't a team sport activity. This is just playing just to play. Playing just to be in your body, to learn what is going on today. Ha. Ah. He, who, who, 
He. It would be very nice, actually, if everybody was unmuted and we could have the full symphony of ridiculousness. Ha. He. Who. And maybe you have some things in your environment. Now, don't hurt yourself, but if you have like a ball or something that you can like let yourself play with, you can have a partner or maybe a foam roller or a regular, I've got also a little smaller ball here. So I can also play. And it becomes like, oh, I'm doing my foam rolling and my fascia integration with my, it doesn't have to be that, it can become that, but let it just still be playful if possible. Like sometimes when we have our things, like I've got a foam roller here, And it can be very easy to get onto, into, onto your item and then go, now I'm back to my adult nature and I'm gonna do my adult things. See if you can take it into something that is novel. Huh. So that's the beauty of play. And what does Andrew Huberman talk about? He talks about people who tinker. So tinkering around, purposeless tinkering. Tinkering is kind of a interesting word. The sound of it is funny. But ah, if we want to boost our creativity, we need to go to the things that we don't know about yet. So how do we find those? How do we start to move into the unknown? Ah. And as I'm here in my play, I can imagine all sorts of things. Like for some reason, once I got here with my pelvis high and my legs up in the air, I could imagine that I'm in like, in outer space, like an astronaut. There is no gravity and I'm just floating around. So allow however you're playing and your environment to inform your imagination. Oh, he, yeah, ooh. So the ha, he, who is just a launching point to make different noises, to have some freedom in your body mind. When people grow up with a lot of trauma, they often don't have the safety to be able to play, right? To be able to play freely and get lost in your play, you gotta feel kind of safe. So if you, <laughs> I was very lucky and had a fairly untraumatic, lots of play life growing up when I was little. My parents both thought that being creative and being playful was way more important than being structured and organized and having a perfectly clean room or anything like that. I see the dog is getting into the play. <laughs> Sunny gets it. Sunny's like, I know how to play. You're gonna play? I know how to do this. <laughs> Sometimes I have to remind myself with the kittens to play with them in ways that are new for me. So yeah, letting yourself roll around and inviting in maybe some imaginary friends to play with. Yeah, we wanna be able to imagine things differently than they actually are. Who's to say what we're missing? Like, what if I have my very, I don't know, when I start to think about an imaginary friend or having a group of imaginary friends I just look into the Zoom and I'm like, oh, I got some people over there, none of whom have I ever met in person. It's close to imaginary friends, but I'm gonna imagine some friends. Oh, I, I'm gonna imagine that I have a, like a, I see them in this painting, so I'm cheating, but there is a half cat, half human, and there's also a little satyr child. What if I'm playing with them? What's gonna happen? So when we engage in this kind of play, part of the thing that's going on, believe it or not, maybe it doesn't happen while we're doing it, maybe it happens after, is that there's actually pruning of neural pathways and neurons that we don't need anymore. Like, so part of neuroplasticity 
is letting go of old stuff, letting go of old crap, letting go of old stuff that's not helpful anymore. How would my cedar let go of some old crap? He would probably just throw it all out. And how would the kitty let go? The kitty human let go of old crap. Maybe it would be more like a spell that she's casting and throwing it out. So inviting the imagination online. Yeah, it's, I have absolutely no problem with being ridiculous. Like if I do something that I think is foolish, I think that's funny. And so that's a great like safety mechanism for me. Anthony always teases me because he's like, you entertain yourself more than you entertain anyone else. And I'm like, I'm good with that. That's okay for me. He doesn't mean it in a mean way. He's just kind of surprised at how much I think I'm funny. <laughs> ah. So letting yourself play, trying out different stuff, trying out movement that is unfamiliar. Oh, look at that. I get up on mine and then I see that Maria has done something very similar. <laughs> what is, what if I let myself go off, off balance? Now, I have to say, I think I've said this before. I was once teaching a class and we were all on physio balls bouncing up and down. And I had a woman who was in her seventies, a very youthful woman. And she's bouncing up and down on her physio ball. And suddenly, boom, she pops off the back of this physio ball and falls on the floor. And I thought, oh my God, I'm gonna get sued. She's gonna hurt herself. And she just pops up and she's like, oh no, because of the class, my body's so fluid, I'm totally fine. She didn't hurt herself at all. There was no grasping, no contraction, no fighting reality, just allowing it to happen. So the invitation is to so see if you can let go whoo, of some of your struggles with reality through play. Huh. It is called role play. I'm just gonna take up more space. Yeah, bolster, perfect. And just find different ways of being in your space, different ways of being in your body. Curiosity and humor. To me, I think the curiosity, wonder, and humor, I'm putting curiosity and wondering in the same, I wonder, I'm curious. And, oh, that's funny. Those are two of the magical, huge keys to embodiment for me. And also, I'm not afraid to be an idiot. In fact, that's pretty funny if I'm an idiot. So I'm not trying to prove something. I'm just here going, oh, how is this? Huh. And what's interesting? What if I slow something down and then speed it up? taking time and playing with time. So, so far in our, we've been kind of playing with space, playing with the room, or I've been playing with space, playing with objects in space. But what if I play with tempo? What if I play with like sustaining time and slowing it so far down? Slow motion and then speeding up. Yeah, play to entertain myself. To see what is possible. Yeah, so a lot of um, somatic practice or embodiment practice is to really be present in what you're doing so that you're actually noticing what's going on. In this, let your focus bang around. Let it just be sometimes pinpointed, sometimes global, 
You can do like the open monitoring, or you can become so interested in what's going on, so curious about what's going on that you're just lost in that. You're totally present in the exploration. <sighs> yeah, fingers, feet, ankles, tongue. <sighs> What can I do? If I start to change my ha, ho, he, ha, that tongue out, that tongue out version actually goes really nicely with my slow motion moments. No need to take yourself seriously. No need to take me seriously. Hmm. I can also just pretend that I'm some jam or some Marmite and I'm just spreading across the toast. If I'm Marmite, I wanna be very thinly spread across the toast. If I'm jam, I probably wanna be more thickly spread. Yeah, so my Marmite body feels very different than my jam body. And I can go back and forth between them. Or it could be the butter melting in the toast. Or I could be the bread and the butter's melting into me. Or it could be the plate under the bread. Yeah, I have no idea what your ex exploration is. <laughs> Just ways of playing. Oh my goodness, I've never seen Sunny so engaged with you. Yeah, Sunny the dog in Mexico. <laughs> I've got my little hocus pocus squeaky deaky right here assisting around the periphery. <sighs> yeah, I can let my play, I could just be a Tootsie Roll, rolling around, being wrapped up in my wrapper. What is a Tootsie Roll? It's a gooey, it's not really caramel, it's not really chocolate, it's brown. Looks kind of like poop, especially if it's been chewed up. Yeah, the slow motion stuff has become very interesting. Could also imagine that somehow the idea of being in an aquarium so that the water can't really move that much. The water in aquarium is gonna be fairly contained and I'm in there. If your movement had a soundtrack, what would the sound, what would it sound like? Hmm, non-judgmental soundtrack. Yeah, so that's one of the things that we want to crust off as fast as possible in our play is any kind of judgment. We need to be free of that in order to be free to really play. Any kind of self <laughs> annihilation, just let that go. Laugh it off. Hmm. The pleasantness of play. <laughs> the delight. Is it possible to play in your body while you're riding the bus? I think that you can. I think you can just go in. That's the beauty of like when we start to connect to ourselves in this like deep sensory embodied way, then we can just, anything can become an incredibly interesting moment because we can do an entire play within ourselves without anyone else knowing it. 
micro moves, the tiniest little dance within yourself that nobody can see, but feels good or addresses some kind of stuckness in your body. Hmm, what can I do to play with that? Yeah, allowing yourself to go diving in, into sensation, into curiosity. into allowing it's the uh what is it yes and the improvisational game of yes and if i say no i block the future of the game so i have to say yes and then i have to add to it so if i say yes to my elbow and then yes and my hand and my hand says yes and my fingers and my fingers say yes and my foot and my foot says yes and my butt and my butt says yes and my shoulders, ah, and my shoulders say yes, and my breath, hmm, and my breath says yes, and sound, ooh, ah, hmm, and the sound says, I don't know, ask the space. So we can break the rules a little bit in the game. especially when we're just playing by ourselves. If it's interesting and worth it to break the rule, break the rule. Yeah. Oh, I can feel the floor. I can feel how amazingly smooth this floor is. That's why I'm in this room today. I was like, oh, I just need to go into, technically, it's really the cat's playroom, formerly known as the movement room and the plant room. Spreading myself around, pouring myself around. Huh. Relaxing my tongue, relaxing my face. waiting for the impulse to move. Sometimes it's just delicious just to hang out in the wonder and in the waiting until something else comes online. Yeah, I'm coming back to the space. The space says yes, and the spiral. Yes, and the spiral. The space says yes, and the spiral, and the spiral says yes, and Michael's face. <laughs> oh, and there's a kitty. Yes, another kitty in the room. <laughs> awesome. They know how to play. They often sense it. Yeah, my little white boy, it maybe it's wrong to call him that, the little squeaky deaky. The white kitten is cleaning himself. He's taken over my sweater that I was wearing, my jumper that I was wearing. Oh yeah, some foot action is always a good idea. Some face, I have some good people in the room. So yeah, if exactly, we're here, we're not alone. We're actually together. We can play, we can see each other. And if you're not in this room, you can imagine you're in this room. And I could describe it. I can see Michael and he's, got his, he's reaching out. I can see Maeve's foot and I can see Maria's eye. <laughs> and it's fun and funny, right? This is one of my favorite things to do when I'm feeling it's usually actually when I'm playing a game, I'm playing a game with Anthony and maybe he's winning and I'm feeling stressed out. So I put my goggles on and I instantly feel different and he feels different. Yeah, so what's it like? There's that many ways I have the, the goggles sometimes have spikes all around them. 
I can cross the goggles, protect my head, check things out. What happens to my environment when I put my goggles on? See everything a little bit differently. I'm narrowing my scope of vision. Then I take them off and the whole world comes back in. Oh. Oh, oh yeah. And here's another interesting thing about play. Play has a, like kids play, there's a homeostasis to it, which means if the children aren't playing enough, then they have the time, then they play more. So it's good for all of us, right? It's not just about our inner child. It's like our inner adult needs to play too. Here's the other kitty. This is the busybody. This is Princess Lotus Flower. She's very sweet and very busy. She has to make sure everything is okay. Fortunately, these kittens are getting used to us in our raucous environment. Gaylord came as more of an adult cat and had to get used to a lot of madness in the house. We had to keep re reassuring him that it was actually okay that we were being loud or whatever we were doing that wasn't actual fighting, that we weren't beating each other up, we're just playing. So yeah, that's the big kitty. He was an adult or almost an adult. So, and I think he must have lived with some, in my imagination, Gaylord had an owner who was an alcoholic, an older person who didn't play with him very much, but drank a lot. And Gaylord would get a treat every time they went to their fridge and put the ice in the glass. So, cause every time Gaylord hears the ice, he comes running. He's like, oh, he's ready for his treat. So in my mind, Gaylord's owner was an old person. And also Gaylord didn't know how to play very much. He has one toy that he likes, the rest of it, not so much. He's learning how to play from watching the kittens and playing with them a little bit, chasing them around. Ah, who are the experts at play? Little kids and animals. And the animals that have the longest play span in their life, like have more neuroplasticity than the animals that have a very short play span. Yeah, so it's great for our brains. Break the pattern up, try something different, do something different. And it's great just for thinking, free thinking. We try it one way and we try it the other way. And then we tried a different way, and then maybe another way. Ah. Putting the play into role play today. Oh, word play is also very fun. So you can use it with language, just playing. I'm sure, yeah, there are different countries that are very different with word play, but I'm sure maybe you probably are well accustomed to great word play. One of my friends calls it ward play because I, <laughs> our, in our family, we had a lot of, a lot of word play. So a lot of word play, changing things, making them different, trying it out. <laughs> just looking like at the camera in a different way, seeing the room and seeing the other people. Yeah, sometimes play is a little dangerous, right? We like to take things to an edge. So you gotta judge that for yourself. Have some awareness as to how far you can go. Ideally, this class is going to be something that is making your body feel healthier and better, not, oh my God, I threw myself around and landed on my head. But I got to say, in my life, that's been enjoyable sometimes, really just throwing my body around, having like <laughs> stage diving or mosh pit, whatever, having some outlet for the more aggressive energy. Ah. 
不要。If I bring my awareness into sensation and I make those sounds, I become so interesting. Feeling what kind of sounds can come out of me and what they feel like in my body, in my chest, in my belly, how they vibrate. <laughs> Anthony and I both started doing some like throat singing, which I don't know that I can do very well in this context, but sometimes I hear him doing it in the shower or sometimes I'm doing it. And it's also like, it's another great way to dispel tension when you start to just make weird sounds. It's like, oh, are we playing now? And feeling what they do into your body. So in, in uh, the Bartenia fundamentals from Laban movement analysis, Ermgard Bartenia had a whole system of sounding. And it was that ooh starts very low down in your pelvis, like the ooh sound. Ooh, and then O oh is a little bit higher. Ooh, oh, ah, coming up to the lungs. A, E, E up here in your throats. Ooh, oh, ah, so you could spend a very long time just playing with one of those vowels feeling where you feel it. Yeah. So I think I'm going to bring us back together. And if you need to blink out and go away, that's totally fine. All my people in TV land, um, maybe you want to join sometime. So feel free to reach out to me. And I'm going to stop recording, which always takes me a while. Make some faces, maybe a quick Facial, like come exercise. join us from TV land. We <laughs> <Yeah>. love you. <laughs> yes.